All right, back to the NBA Finals. Steph Curry looked a mess. Wasn't feeling well. He all right? Slow to get going. Body language not great. Actually had to leave the floor at one point, right? Mm -hmm. Get back to the facilities, perhaps. But he finished the half strong. This is what Tim Leglow was talking about. Was able to find the rhythm, get some buckets before halftime, cut into that double-digit lead, which trimmed it to five. Then he continued that in the second half on the way to 23. Didn't have a great shooting night, but they won. And he talked about the evening afterwards. The strength in numbers, I know it's been around for a while, but tonight it just had, it had to mean a lot more than maybe it has a lot of nights. Yeah, I think when you get to this stage, um, like who our DNA shows up. So it's not something you just just throw out there to have you know nice shirts and give out to the crowd at Oracle and have all this marketing stuff. It's literally like how we approach you know every day from training camp to to June. So um, how we support each other, um, how guys stay ready. Throughout the year, whether they play, you know, like you said, 30 minutes or miss, you know, 10 straight games out of the rotation, whatever it is, coach always talks about it <clears throat> that everybody's going to have a chance to help us win a championship at some some point, um, and just to stick with it and be patient, and it shows itself over the course of a season, and you know, tonight was was huge and. You know, we need three more wins and we need it to keep going, but that's a part of who we are in our DNA. It's not just what we say. Rachel Nichols, host of the Jump, joins us now. We hear a lot of these things mentioned. DNA, strength in numbers. They reveal themselves tonight as, once again, they're down another one of their star players. You have talked to Clay. What can you tell us? Yeah, Clay, I walked into the locker room. Now, Scott, I like to really ask the important <laughs> journalism questions first. So okay. I did ask him if he had to amputate the leg, if that was coming. He right. said, no, amputation is off the table. So that's a little breaking news for Thank me to you. you. He also told me he intends to play game three. Should not be a surprise as Steve Kerr joke, Clay could be half dead and say he's going to play. But he did tell me while he still has to get an MRI on the hamstring, he said it generally feels okay. And he said the injury he had in last year's finals, you remember in game one, he suffered that high ankle sprain when J.R. Smith came down on him. Nobody thought he was going to play the game after that. Guess what? He came out, he started, he played great. He said what happened to him tonight, not nearly as bad as that. So when he says he's going to play, you kind of got to believe him. We'll see how the next couple days. I also just want to hit you with the fact that Andre Guadalla significantly limping around the Warriors locker room. But then again, he's another guy who looks hurt until he steps on the court. Didn't limp on that game winner tonight, Scott, and he's been dealing with his injury for weeks. Rachel, thank you very much. Appreciate it. No amputation. We showed you that 18 to nothing run to begin the third quarter. The longest run by any team in the NBA Finals to begin a half since the ABA NBA merger in 1977. To add some context to what you see, the Warriors were five for seven on open shots and contested shots, six of eight. Uh, and they contested six of the eight Raptors field goals, I should say. Clay Thompson scored or assisted on 13 of the 18 points. Tim Legler's alongside, and uh, Tim, I mentioned that you and I spoke about that third quarter, right? Yeah. And, and I mean, this might seem like a silly thing to point out, but that building's on fire, and then people go at halftime, you got the lead, people are slow to get back to their seats. Home court advantage is a real thing, and it's not an advantage when Golden State finds their footing and then they land that flurry of punches. I'm not saying that's a big part of it, but is it, it, is it, is it a little part yeah, of it? Yeah, it played into it, and I'm yeah. going to get into it in a second, the start of the, th the second half. Right, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm good, you know, but first, to me, Scott, the end of the first half. it was started with what happened at the end of the second quarter in yeah. a half that Toronto dominates. They allow Curry to get loose at the end of the half, and at this point, he's bottled up. He doesn't look well. They're checking out on him on the bench. He, he looks like he's physically ill. He doesn't have any energy. He doesn't have any space. And they make some mistakes at the end of the half. He gets a walk-up three because Kawhi's not up on the screener. Uh, then he gets the breakaway layup off the turnover. He gets a short little runner in the middle there. And he finishes with two free throws. So Steph Curry gets nine points in the last 250 of the second quarter. That, to me, 
felt like a huge momentum shift in the game because not only is he now feeling it, it's a five-point game. It should have been 12 to 15. You can't allow Golden State to narrow the gap like that as you're walking off the court, knowing that coming out, you aren't going to have that emotion in the crowd to start of the second half. That's most NBA arenas, of right? Of course. I, I'm and, not singling right. out Toronto. I'm just saying I'm singling them out because their home court advantage is so good that it's noticeable yeah, when there's a ton of sure. empty seats and people aren't ready to go nuts. Which is why your margin for error needs to be greater. You need to go in there up 12. So if you do have a slow start, right, right now maybe you call a timeout. It's only, it's only an eight-point game instead of five from what it was. And so for me, that's where it all started to turn. And then they came out in the third quarter and they're – Passing in motion really turned the game. In the highlight, we showed Bogut and Cook contributing in ways that, that you couldn't have imagined yeah. they would be asked to or I shouldn't say be able, but they did. Uh, they're certainly capable of it. But I'm looking at Siakam and Gasol. They had 52 in game one. I'm thinking there's no chance. Golden State's like, go ahead and do that again. They had 18 in yeah. this game. So, I mean, that, that jumps off the page. But as you're watching and as you're putting stuff together to show us to illustrate where the game's won and lost, what stands out? So they come out to start the third quarter. Golden State's feeling a little better about themselves at halftime. And, and now the motion and the passing turns the game. They get 14 straight buckets on assists to start the third quarter. This is a set play. Here's what they're trying to get. You're going to get a back screen here. They're going to get Iggy out of there, right? So now you get the back cut. And then the last part of this is going to be Cousins cleaning up for Curry, bringing him to the ball. It's a set they run all the time. But it begins with this back screen action. And when you're guarding a guy like Steph Curry, man, are you afraid to leave his side. And so you end up getting this action right here on this screen. Now, this is one of those situations to me, this should be an obvious switch. I mean, Danny Green should just switch off here, pick up Draymond, and then when Curry pops out, that's okay. We got Kawhi jumping. They don't do it because Danny Green is so concerned about Steph Curry getting a three that you get an easy pitch and catch layup right here. Clay Thompson, Draymond Green. Great design, great execution. The motion and, and the passing starting to take over the game. Here's the very next trip. Curry with the rebound, throws it ahead. And right here, take a look. He's looking up the floor. He sees this, and you can see him pointing. He's saying, get the ball into the post. It's exactly what they do. How good was DeMarcus Cousins tonight, by the Remarkable. way? Remarkable. I thought when he went down with that injury, we'd never see him again this postseason. Good for him. So good tonight. You can't say enough at the minutes, the production you gave him. And again, here goes that weak side action with Steph Curry. You're so afraid of him popping free off the cut. Kawhi Leonard falls asleep a little bit. You get this little brush screen, and here goes Clay Thompson. And again, it's an easy little drop off layup to Clay. So, first half, Golden State, I think they started the game shooting 28% to a right. quarter plus. Now they start getting the motion, the movement, they're getting layups, they're getting open threes, completely different offensive flow in that third quarter, but it all started with that last three minutes of the first half. Totally agree. If it was a fight, they'd, 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 there'd have been a standing eight in that second when they're down double digits, but this is a heavyweight champ. You let them catch their breath and get their legs beneath them, and then good luck. But then Toronto punches back, and it, we end up in a wild sequence there at the end where it looked like Go Golden State's trying to turn it over. Iguodala gets that look. He takes that long, pregnant pause, stares it down, and makes it. What do you make of this yeah, sequence? Yeah, and it looks to me like the coaches right there are screaming to foul Draymond Green once Curry gives it up the first time because they're definitely close enough to do it. Instead, he hits Livingston. It ends up back over to Curry, and then eventually Iguodala, who takes that three. A lot of nerve there because you got three, four seconds left on the shot clock, but I do think that's the right play because if you don't take that shot, you might end up not getting a clean look or turning it over in a two-point game. That's a guy that's been a finals MVP. He's not afraid of the lights, steps up, makes a huge shot. But look, I also want to talk about Clay going down, uh -huh. and this guy that you're about to talk to, you can't say enough about what Quinn Cook did coming in and giving them nine points at a critical time in the game with Clay Thompson limping off the floor. We talked about Cousins. Great Draymond Green was sensational. Uh, this they got basically contributions up and down that roster, and this is why they're the, they're the world champs, man. Margin for error is so small against this team. They make you pay like nobody else. Tim Legler, Scott Van Pelt, Sports Center, 11 o'clock in the East, and you made my segue perfectly. I will just turn and welcome in Quinn Cook. Congratulations on a significant contribution, man. The time came for those shots. You were, you were ready for the moment and rose to the occasion. How, how did that, uh, Tim just described that third quarter avalanche. How did it all come together from your vantage point? Just getting stops. I thought we uh, started the second half um, the way we were supposed to, just getting stops, um, letting our defense dictate our offense. Obviously, we're talented offensively, but, um, you know, we take a lot of pride defensively. So I thought we got stops and, uh, you know, we got some shots to go in and, uh, you know, got everybody going. 
Quinn, you all as a team are so familiar with these moments and, and, and absorbing other teams' runs and then delivering your own. In that second quarter, buildings on fire, you all are down 12. Which Coach Kerr's message to you all as a group? Oh, weather the storm. Weather the storm. I thought, uh, you know, we weathered the storm um, the way we were supposed to. Um, we closed the second quarter out the right way, had some momentum going to the second half. And, uh, you know, we've been in this situation before um, at all aspects of the season and uh, every level of the playoffs. So guys have no panic in them. And uh, our leaders do a great job of just keeping everybody composed. And, uh, you know, like, we, like I said earlier, you know, the third quarter really started our, uh, you know, run for, you know, the win tonight. Whether it's Boogie coming back from an injury and delivering, whether it's Bogut off the bench, with I believe it was three alley hoops, whether it's you, you know, next man up's a cliche in sports, but all of the guys who were the next guys up for you delivered, for you personally, those shots delivering the way you did, the satisfaction you feel in a moment sitting here right now is what? I'm um, great, obviously, you know, to, to win in the finals is, is definitely great, especially here to get one here, go back. You know, uh, to Oakland, 1-1 is definitely big. It definitely, uh, you know, changes things in the series. But obviously, it's a long series left. So um, to get this win feels amazing. Obviously, everybody stepping up makes it even better. And with guys out, you know, Clay getting hurt, um, getting banged up, Loon getting banged up, you know, Kay still out. Um, you know, guys just have to step up. And we always have our brothers back. So, uh, you know, guys that have confidence in us all season, we have confidence in each other and in ourselves. And, uh, you know, it paid off tonight. Well, I know what you know, and that's when the time comes, the DMV is ready to stand up, and uh, I see you doing your thing, man. Congratulations on delivering a big way and making those big shots, and thanks for sitting down with us here on the show, Quinn. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. No doubt. That's Quinn Cook, and this is Sports Center. Golden State gets back and evens up this series, and part of the reason why Quinn Cook's contributions were required is that not only was, uh, well, Iguodala comes back from the injury. Obviously, Durant is out. But in this game, Clay Thompson, who was playing fantastic basketball, goes out with a hamstring strain. Uh, Steve Kerr moments ago describing the situation there. Uh, not really. Um, Clay said he'll be fine, but, you know, Clay could be half dead and he'd say he'd be fine. <laughs> so, uh, he's, uh, we'll see. You know, he pulled his hamstring. He thinks it's minor. Um, so I don't know what that means going forward. And uh, Loon, uh, something with his shoulder. And so we'll see. Sorry. That's all I got. Given all those things in play, what were the keys you thought of the team ultimately prevailing over this? Um, well, you know, we, I said yesterday and today that 109 points uh, is plenty to win the game. Um, which is what we had in game one, but we gave up 118. So uh, it was all about our defense, and uh, we held them to 37%, and uh, you know forced 15 turnovers and guarded the three-point line well. So it was uh, championship defense, and that's what it's going to take. Nick, back left, standing. Steve, Nick Friedel, ESPN. Back. How would you put into context the performance DeMarcus gave you, given the fact that he's missed six weeks and he tore his quad? I thought he was great. I mean, you know, we came in thinking, all right, he can, you know, maybe play 20 minutes, and um, he gave us almost 28. There was only one time in the game when he needed a rest, which was mid-fourth, and we gave him a couple minutes and then got him back in the game. Uh, but he was fantastic, and, uh, you know, we needed everything. He gave uh, out there his rebounding, his uh, his toughness, his physical presence. Uh, you know, getting the ball in the paint and uh, just playing playing big like he does. Uh, we needed all of that, so I thought he was fantastic. Phil, hey Steve. Obviously, repeating is difficult. You try to go three in a row, and you're going to need health on your side. And you see that currently. It's a bit of walking wounded. DeMarcus Cousins comes back, plays as well as he does. Andre Iguodala dealing with the calf issues. He delivers the ultimate knockout blow. Kevon Looney wasn't able to go in this one because of the chest contusion. And then Clay Thompson, obviously, uh, out with that hamstring that Coach Kerr was just talking about. We welcome in the great Doris Burke now. And Doris, uh, 
Look, there's so many things to look at here, and I guess I would just start with the guys that were on the floor and were asked to deliver were able to. What does that say about the collective uh, of this group? I just thought the whole night was the epitome of championship medal. When you want to understand what it looks like, it looked like tonight from the Golden State Warriors, and it was across the board. The confidence that Quinn Cook showed in knocking down shots after Clay Thompson hits that, you know, the, the thigh injury or the, the hamstring injury, Kevon Looney going down. I mean, just, I thought it was extraordinary across the board, and it was a really, to me, I know there were some X's and O's, but to me, it was about toughness and make them feel you and defensively having the pride to say, you're not doing to, a, to us what you did the other night. Championship medal. That's what this was all about for me. I, I completely agree. And I, and I think, you know, you heard, you heard Draymond after that last game talk about what uh, Siakam did. And he said, look, we're not going to have that. I mean, 52 in game <laughs> one. He and Gasol combined for 18. When, when Kerr says make, make them feel us, you asked him specifically about that. Doris, what do they mean? What does that mean specifically? Well, I think first and foremost, you have to come with a level of intention, and it starts always with getting back in transition. When we asked Steph and Draymond what did not translate on film that you saw in game one, and spot on immediately, both of them said speed. So the first thing they had to do was get back and build their defense and make them play in a half court. Then it's about intention. What are you trying to do from a tactical standpoint? What are you sending at Kawhi Leonard? How are you recovering to shooters? It just felt like a completely different team on the defensive end. And I will say this, and I heard Jeff Van Gundy talk about this, like at some point, when do you not have enough? It felt fragile tonight, Scott. I missed a good portion of this basketball game because I was constantly heading back to the locker room for one injury or another. Uh, I think in light of what they had to fight through just in the course of the game, and Steph Curry, I'm telling you the truth, he tried to sprint off the floor because he was not feeling well, and he's a consummate pro, and he came back and answered the questions, uh, but he wasn't right all night long so this this to me was just an, a special special win if they walk away with this championship they're going to remember game two on the road in, in Toronto yep because it was really in many respects not a work of art but nobody cares when you're having a parade man can you win four games and you got to win them ugly and they did Doris appreciate the time always thanks Scott all right another look at the winning play what ultimately Provided a cushion that was too great for the Raptors to overcome. After very nearly losing the ball, Livingston finds Iguodala. And a former Finals MVP looked at it, thought about it for a split second. He's like, I'll pull this. All y'all, hold this L. Take it with you. Big, big shot from Iguodala. And that uh, helps Steve Kerr vault up this list. As a player and a coach, the man's been involved in the Finals ten times. This is almost embarrassing. Nothing to be embarrassed about. Look at that company. He's now up to 76 victories. We welcome in Paul Pierce. And, and, and Paul, Doris was just talking about the fragile nature of the guys on the, on the court and who is able to go and who's not. I want to ask you about a Raptors team that was cooking with gas, man. They take out M Milwaukee four straight. They went on their home floor in this one. They're up double digits in the second. And now it's, it's the series is tied. How fragile is confidence when you're new to this and the champs respond as they did? I think their confidence is fractured. I mean, I think it started there in the second quarter when they had a chance to really expand on the lead. Golden State pulled it within five. Then they came out in the third quarter, went on this 18-0 run, and that really put a dent in their confidence. When you waste a game like this, that Kawhi Leonard goes off of 34 points, 14 rebounds, you lose this game, now you got to go on the road and go to state where they're as tough as anybody in the NBA. They know that it's an uphill battle from here on out. Paul, help me understand. I mean, look, you played at a star level in this league, but when you've got guys like, say, a cook on your team, and, and you're a role player means you play your role. Be great in your role, right? That's the old saying. Yes. How do you create a culture where a guy knows his role, but then when that role changes, he's able to elevate his game to a different type of role? Well, you know, everybody wants more. 
you know, when you win, you know, Cook was on a championship last year team, and everybody wants more, but he got he has an understanding of this is what they need from me right now for us to win. And then now when guys go down, he says, okay, I'm going to get more of an opportunity. I've been waiting on this opportunity for a long time. And he steps into that expanded role, and he steps up a, a role that he's been wanting probably all year long. But, you know, patience is virtue. He stepped right in into that role and knocked down some key shots. I mean, he made a huge impact on tonight's game, and, you know, that's what championship teams are all about. Agreed. Now, Golden State's been able to figure out how to survive without Durant for the stretch that they have, including that end of Game 5 against Houston and then Game 6 on the road. They were able to get through Portland, and so far, here they are with a split. But if, if, if Clay's hamstring's not right, and you got to go without him, and you got to go without KD, at some point, man, 48 minutes is a long time without those guys. <laughs> Can you win a game without, without those guys, even at home? You know what? After tonight, I'm not putting anything past the Golden State Warriors. I, I mean, they have the, the championship DNA. I feel like whoever they put out there, they can get it done. You know, you have the two-time MVP in Curry. You have finals MVP in Iguodala. Cousins is starting to come around. So I, I wouldn't put it past them. If Clay doesn't, doesn't play or KD doesn't play, uh, Golden State is still a great team. And, I, and I'd be remiss if I didn't just get, as a guy who's been through it, you try to play hurt, you try to come back from injuries. Boogie Cousins, I'm, I'm amazed that he's able to give them that. What did you make of his performance tonight, Paul? It was extraordinary, to tell you the truth, because I didn't expect him to give much in this series after coming off two injuries in, in this season. Right. For Who him did? to have an impact, <laughs> for him to have an impact, and this kind of impact in just his second game, I'm amazed. I mean, he outplayed Gasol and Ibaka together. Huge points, huge rebounds, huge defense. His passing. And, you know, my hat's off to him because I doubt that he can even help this Warriors team in this series. And he's been a big contributor tonight. Amazing. Paul, thanks so much for the time. Good to visit, man. All right. Thank you. And, I mean, this is the graphic representation of just, just the minutes. Because, look, everyone had their jokes about, you know, how, what kind of shape could the man be in. What You heard Steve Kerr mention it. What, they thought maybe he could give him 20. Well, 28 minutes, and Looney goes out. So, Bogut comes in, and he gives you something. But a double-double and, you know, four, four assists shy of a triple-double. And uh, Boogie perhaps will be joining us as we continue to discuss uh, this season, excuse me, series evening victory. Stephen A. Smith definitely said to join us. We'll get the Raptors thoughts as well as game two goes the way of the road team.